I would like to take a brief moment this evening and share a thought with my audience that I don't think many people have considered. If Donald Trump would have had his way in 2020 and been inaugurated and continued in the presidency, right now, everybody would be talking about what's going to happen in a Mike Pence presidency going forward. All of the energy would be on the left. There would have been no Joe Biden. He wouldn't have tried to run again. They would be looking at someone much like who we have spoken about in the last few days. Uh, Andy Bashir, uh, Buttigieg, Kamala Harris, possibly Gavin Newsom. But your choice would be singular right now. It would be Mike Pence, because Donald Trump's time would have been up. There would have been no case for his son, either one of his sons. I think that might frighten a few folks. But once again, it's not something anybody really thinks about because we are so trapped these days in our emotions. It's been a huge luxury for people on the right to have had Joe Biden and his continued missteps and misbehavior and poor management to beat up on for the last three and a half years. Major luxury. The talking points write themselves. It's battlefield of the mind. It's literally been a gift to Donald Trump, truly. His poor job for another campaign for another four years. We wouldn't be talking about who Donald Trump's VP pick was going to be, would we? No, because Trump and Pence would have continued and it would, we'd be in the last few months and I guarantee China would still be snatching up fishing boats and threatening Taiwan. That wouldn't have changed. And regardless of what Donald Trump says, Russia would have still gone into Ukraine. You could probably make the argument that Afghanistan would have been managed better for sure. But has that made, other than the lives that were lost, a huge difference in the vast majority of Americans' lives? There would have been decisions made differently, and perhaps some folks would have saved money. But what would your plans be, Trump supporter now, knowing that he was going to go away right off into the sunset, having served his eight years? What would your plan, instead of having energy now, thinking about, yeah, four more years of Trump, it'd be the end of Trump, and you would have... Mike Pence, Battlefield of the Mind. Would love to have you at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. We talk about this kind of stuff and thinking versus feeling. I know it seems like an easy thing, but for the vast majority of Americans right now, it isn't. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. (coughs) To separate, pardon me, when we are thinking and when we are just feeling. I mean, imagine. Imagine if Donald Trump came out and said, you know what, we had a great four years. And he has. You know, when Donald Trump talks about his presidency, it's like, boy, things were great. Man, if we could just have that back, those four years, just exactly how it was, why doesn't he just nominate Pence? Everything, why, if it wasn't broke, if it wasn't broke, don't fix it. Everybody's problem with Mike Pence came in a little one to two month area in November and December of 2020. Prior to that, I didn't hear one single complaint about Mike Pence. Not one. Not from any Trump supporter, not from any Trump channel. The vast majority of his job as vice president, everybody loved. If you can show me an article, if anyone out there can show me an article prior to the whole election thing, prior to November of 2020, where Trump supporters had a problem with something that Mike Pence did, I would love to read it. I would really love to read it. Now, there has been this speculation about, and this is the part that's going to mess with a lot of minds. It really is. It's kind of rough doing this right before bed. I know it's late right now, but this is going to mess with your mind a little bit. There has been talk out there that Joe Biden isn't Joe Biden, that it's some guy in a mask. Some people have said that, well, the the whole State of the Union thing, when he looked really powerful and all that kind of stuff, that it was just uh, either his meds were were doped up just right, 
or it was uh, CGI. It was he wasn't really standing there. It was somebody else, and it was all AI. Or it was it's just a guy literally in some excellent makeup from Hollywood, because they said, "Oh, look at this little earlobe difference there, and this little wrinkle difference there," as if eighty would look like forty in anybody. This is this is the allegation. Now I'm going to show you some things that completely debunk this and. Here's the, going to be the hard part to wrap your mind around. If this was the case, why did he screw up? Well, Florida Marquis, they have wanted to replace him. Then why wouldn't, why would they want to replace him? If they could just run somebody out using AI in, in some kind of a setting with a green screen where he wasn't really there, or if they could just put somebody in a mask, why would they want to replace him? Why? He could just go out and he could attack Trump and attack the right, and the person speaking would not obviously be the real Joe Biden, like people have been said been saying. So why? Why would they need this now? Why why would this all have gone if this was really what they have done, if they have this incredible ability to manipulate elections, number one, where it doesn't matter who the nominee is, they can just cheat and stuff ballot boxes. If that were the case, and number two, even if it wasn't the case they could do that, they could make somebody look like they were Joe Biden. Why in the world would there be anybody talking about replacing the guy? Why? It literally makes no sense to logic. Now, even before, and it's sad that I have to remind people of this, even before this catastrophic, precipitous decline in the man's mental state, when he was fully in command of his faculties, and there was no doubt he knew what he was doing, when there was no possible way anybody could say, well, that's just dementia, this guy was Hansie McPito, and there are multiple, everybody has stopped talking about this, about the character of the man, they they, they're talking about his uh, inability to govern. They used to, they used to be, I should say, used to be talking about his inability to govern, his completely inappropriate behavior around young women, even in front of his wife. And this is a, a cut poll referring to a young female constituent as good-looking. Rule, guys, and I, I don't have to usually tell Gen X guys this, but guys, once you're married... Once you're married, unless you're in company where you know it isn't going to get repeated, you don't refer to other women, the old, young, actor, or pardon me, actress, whatever, anyone. You don't refer to them as good looking because you're married. The only good looking person to you is your wife. It's just, it's simple. You don't. And this guy, I mean, and the poll shows this. Now, as far as, but Maki, haven't you seen his ears, his hair, and this wrinkle, and that? It's not the same face shape. You ready for this? It's not the same face shape. It can't possibly be the same guy. This is the same guy. Exact same guy. I'm sure a lot of you know who this is. The difference in the face shape has to do with muscle tone, and age, and there's a lot of nurses and doctors and um, practitioners out there right now that know exactly what's going on here. You see, he didn't get, he didn't gain a, didn't gain weight. This is partially age. Leonardo DiCaprio, by the way, for those of you who don't know who this is, partially age, but it's also drug related. You see, when you lose, you see how you can see that the tone and the shadow in the shape of the face here on the left, and how all of a sudden it's all just kind of this round face, this, this kind of roundish-looking face. I'm sure he's gained a little weight because we all do with age. This is opioid face. This is what happens long-term when you take opioids because they're such a powerful CNS depressant, central nervous system depressant. They affect the muscles in the entire body, especially the face. And people that once had color and vigor and shape 
and tone to their facial muscles and had one look to it, especially with men, all of a sudden they get this, this round happy face look. And it has to do with the lack of muscle tone because of the opioid use. I had talked about this with Biden before. He came out in one video where he had purple lips. And it clearly looked like an opioid or overdose. But here's a, a montage. And th this guy made no um, attempt, you know, during the younger years of his life to hide the fact that, you know, he used certain things to keep going, so to speak, and stay on his game. And, in his, and now it's just catching up to him. The doses are just catching up to him. Here you can see it completely. Even back then, I mean, the guy had a receding hairline and, and wrinkles, and here it gets a little bit better, and it looks like here he got some kind of a hair plug thing done or whatever, but this is just age. Now, if you don't think so, if you don't think so, watch this. This is going to actually help me lead into another point to debunk an entirely different conspiracy theory. How many of you know who this is? How many of you can tell me by looking at this picture? Oh, yeah, I recognize her. She was blah, 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 blah in blah, 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 blah show. I remember watching that. And by the way, incredibly popular show. Virtually everybody has heard of it. Virtually ev almost everybody has watched it unless you're really young. And even the really young have heard of it. That's how popular the show was. <coughs> you ready to have your mind blown? Grave mind blown? This is a picture from 1920. This actress was born in 1902. This picture is of a woman who is 18 years old. You know how you know her? This is her. This is Irene Ryan. At 18. And you ready for this? You ready for this? This is the part that's going to blow your mind. This is the part that's gonna, you're going to go, what? She was born in 1902. The Beverly Hillbillies, this is Granny, of course, from the Beverly Hillbillies, ran from 62 to 71. So she would have been, during the filming of this, between the ages of 60 and 69 years old. This is what the woman looked like when she was the ages of 60 to 69 years old. Now, this is from, like I said, 1962 to 1971. You remember the good old days, MAGA, when there were no chemtrails, and there was no fluoride in the water, and there wasn't chemicals in our food, and everybody lived long and prosperous lives, and they were so happy. This is what a woman in her mid-60s looked like. This is why the retirement age when people went to the nursing home and sat in the rocker and watched sun sunsets with their, hopefully, their, you know, their partner. That age was in the 60s, was in their 60s. Very few people lived past that. Now, here's the part that's going to blow your mind. Here is also, in 2024, a 67-year-old. I just want you to soak this up. This isn't makeup. This isn't Hollywood. This isn't CGI. This is Denise Austin. She's, of course, fitness yoga guru. Just exercises. Exercises and eat right. Has a healthy diet. Not a ton of, I mean, virtually no surgery. She doesn't believe in it. No Botox. None of that crap. 67-year-old in 2024. 60 mid-60s somewhere, somewhere between 62 and 69 years old, in this picture. You see, that's the difference between what life was then versus life now. Everybody thinks things were so much... This is something, psychological operations, alert, psychological operations, alert, 24 cognitive biases, 24 logical fallacies. This is something called declinism. This is where people always think things were so much better in the past. Oh, make America great again. We need to go back to the good old days when we had regular gasoline and people smoked all the time and ate garbage and didn't exercise. 
When you turn 67, those of you who haven't yet, whether you're, I guess whether you're a man or a woman, would I mean, it's kind of tough to ask this picture, you know, of men, but would, okay, let me ask it this way. Guys, would you like to be the kind of guy that would attract a 67-year-old that looks like this? Would you like to be that guy that could go on a date with a 67-year-old who looks like this? And just for those of you who don't know, this is, you know, back in the 90s when Denise Austin was making all of her money, and this is her now. As you can see, she's not as skinny as she was. Nobody nobody would be, but, you know, 33, let's see, 33 years, let's see, 1990, 67, so, so 30, 34 in this picture-ish, I'm guessing, you know, because it says, I'm just going to assume 1990, it says 1990s, that's the... the 23, 33 years ago from 67 or 66. So in that ballpark, but you get my point. And for those of you, this is a kind of a middle of the road between young Irene Ryan when she was 18 and her uh, time as granny on the Beverly Hillbillies. This is her doing some radio stuff. Uh, Happiest girl in town, Irene Ryan. You can find this on YouTube. So... Just saying, people change. People change. This would be a great thing. I'll bet uh, you could take this picture to any any gathering and bet anybody a hundred bucks that they they would not that they'd be able to guess who this was and the roles this person played in Hollywood. People change, but back then. Back then, they changed precipitously, very quickly. So, when I debunk all this crap about, well, chemtrails are killing this and that and the other, and that the stuff in the water and this, that, and the food, and it's killing people, and (coughs) it's just bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. People are stronger and healthier and live longer. That's why it's breaking Social Security, for Christ's sake. When, when... When Biden said, you know, we busted social, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, he, he actually wasn't kidding. He was having probably just one of those lucid moments. Social Security was never meant. You retire at 65 and you live 30 years. You'll, you know, you'll take out way more, way more than you put in, depending on how much you made. But, you know, the amount of money that you will get the benefit from will be far greater than the amount of money you earned. So, I'm just saying, it it, would be very, very hard for anyone to make the the case to me that, especially in America, that Americans aren't living longer lives, longer, healthier, more productive lives than they were in the 60s. Go back, look at the ages of the Golden Girls. Look at the ages of the people in All in the Family. The ages of the people in um, Gilligan's Island. That one will blow your mind. Who had Ginger being the final living person on your your bingo card? Um, the ages, like even the the woman that played uh, Lovey Howell, was was only in her sixties. I think actually late fifties. And she was playing this wrinkled, elderly, old woman. I don't think she was playing a character. In real life, she wasn't as old as Denise Austin is in this picture. And I could give you a hundred other examples. I think Christy Brinkley is another one of them. And there are male actors as well that have taken care of themselves, eat right, get the proper amount of rest. Never been more blessed. But it's a PSYOP. It's an absolute psychological operation to think that people don't change as they get older and that, you know, somebody's replacing Biden and all this kind of stuff. This is just a man in dementia. Anybody who's ever had an elderly relative knows they have good days and have bad days and have good times of the day and bad times of the day in those final years. Some days they look really great. Some days they're angry as hell. Some days they don't know what planet they're on. 
And yeah, they just, they look different in pictures. It's just the reality. So the other reality that nobody thought of right now, there would be, to my mind, massive amounts of uncurable depression on the right, knowing that Donald Trump was getting ready to sail off into the sunset, never to return, and leaving you with Mike Pence as president. So, just going to leave it there. God bless all of you who have signed up the Patreon channel. I cannot express enough my gratitude. I try to every single day. It's huge. It's literally changing the face of how YouTube works, how online existence works. And it's just a dollar. It's just one dollar per month. And for those of you that um, that sometimes take me to task over this, I have 130,000 subscribers. 130,000 subscribers almost on YouTube. Not even 2%. Not even 2% of that 130,000 subscribers has signed up at any level at Patreon. And it's still making a huge difference. That's how small of the numbers need to be. That's how powerful you could be. Would you like to join us? We'd love to have you. $1 a month, even less than that if you sign up for an entire year. For an entire year, it's less than $12. For a whole year. Hundreds and hundreds of videos that you that you will never see on YouTube. They're not allowed. So I will leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.